Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. It's a very new week, and we are happy to welcome you to our show titled Speak of Africa. We have a whole lot of news for you, and we thank those who are watching us for the first time. If this is your first time of watching Speak of Africa, I, my name is Prince Ojan, your host. Please watch and share the show with your, your friends and family. Last week, we were talking about a lot of statistics. We noticed that some people do not like the findings, but statistics do not lie. We're simply telling you that do a better job of watching the show, okay? Some people were complaining that we're not really supporting Ambazonia. We think that's false. When you look at this show, the records are there for you to see. We cannot argue with, with success. Our very first video, when we launched our first video, the topic was this problem the people of Ambazonia are facing in Africa. And we're talking about their self-determination and their quest to reestablish, restore their independence. We talked about this in that video. Since then, we've been talking about Ambazonia ever since. So when somebody says they doubt whether we are really supporting them, we are an activist channel. We are a Pan-Africanist channel. We believe in Africa and we believe in sharing messages with Africans. We're just telling you that we understand our audience better and we encourage you to continue watching, watching and sharing the show with your friends. Please do. Even today, we have a lot of news and we're starting the news with Ambazonia. We know when we talk about Ambazonia, some of you are very happy. Yeah, with Ambazonia, one of our guys from Manfe sent us a write-up. The write-up consists of a lot of statistics on police brutality, the brutality of Bia's army. When you're plying those roads, life is very, very precarious. First, the roads are very bad. Worst of all, the soldiers, the police, the gendarmes, they make life unbearable for passengers and drivers, okay? At every turn, there's a checkpoint, and at every checkpoint, you have to pay a lot of bribes. We're saying this because we think the powers that be should know this. They should know about the sufferings of people in Abazonia. The colonial government of uh, Paul Bia sent these thoughts. Whenever they send them to Abazonia, they are very, very happy because they know that Bia, Paul, doesn't care what happens to people in Abazonia. Whether these police officers are maltreating them, killing them, brutalizing them, Bia doesn't care. So we want the world to know that by supporting this Bia government, they are being hypocritical. This document that one of our viewers sent to us from Manfe, it gives the details. It shows us the plight of traveling, say, from Ekok to Nigeria or from Manfe to Kumba. The number of checkpoints on the road are just too many. So please, Paul Bia, tell your guys to remove some of these checkpoints because the guys are not really doing anything for security. They are simply collecting money from the poor travelers and poor drivers. The drivers and the population have had it up to here. They're tired. This is very, very miserable. You send these people, you need to pay them well so that they should not be asking for bribes at every turn. And that's a predicament most of these people face. Bias talks are always asking for bribes. Okay? What about the people are carrying? Sometimes when they have 5,000, they will give at least 3,000 to Bias uh, soldiers at the checkpoint. For what? It is very, very tough to ply most of these roads because these thugs from Bia's government are a thorn in the flesh of these people and they've had it up to here. And talking about Bia's government, today we are sharing a story that's breaking out and this story has to do with uh, an element of uh, Bia's uh, Paul's presidential guard. They killed somebody in Mangie. Then after that, the guy went back, brought uh, a knife, and started butchering innocent victims. This matter has been publicized, but what has the Bia government done about it? Nothing. So, so long as they are protecting Bia, Bia is happy. But what happened to Ali Bongo is going to happen to Bia in Cameroon. We can predict this. Right now, the guy is old and aged and senile. 
So many forces are working around him, eventually they may sweep him away. Who knew Ali Bongo is going to be swept away? He's going to be telling people, make some noise, make some noise, make some noise. Soon it will be Paul Bia's turn to say, hey, go out there and make some noise. The guys have arrested me. I'm in the presidential palace. They've arrested me. My wife is somewhere else. I'm somewhere else. I don't know what's going on. Make some noise. Make some noise. Okay? <laughs> That's what uh, Bia will start doing soon. And we'll have the story to tell you. But when we look at the world, what the major stories that are breaking out, it is the war in Gaza. America is a big brother playing games behind the scenes and sometimes in the open. Israel is saying they don't want a pause or a ceasefire, but it looks like because there have been protests in the streets, the people in Israel do not like the government of Benjamin Netanyahu. They have been putting pressure on this government and the U.S. government. Finally, it looks like behind the scenes, Joe Biden is pressing some buttons. There's going to be a pause or ceasefire. What are, they don't call it that, but that's what it's going to be. Because a lot of those hostages, they don't know where they are. They have been looking for them. The IDF of Israel does not know where these hostages are. Some of them are, have died. So what happens if more die? And that's why most of those families are worried. They are putting a lot of pressure on the government of Benjamin Netanyahu. But Joe Biden is also putting a lot of pressure on the government of Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel. Soon, there will be elections in the United States. They are voting next year, November 7, right? So, Joe Biden doesn't want to lose the elections. So, he's looking at the elections that is coming, and he wants to win. If he has to win these elections, he has to play his game right. As much as he's supporting Israel, he's also a Zionist uh, president. Because Joe Biden is a Jew, his wife is a Jew, so obviously he has to support his people. So this time, the support for the Jewish state is real, because Joe Biden is one of theirs. He's also a Jew, okay? Mm -hmm. So we understand. And which is why you see him supporting the, the guy in Ukraine, okay? Zelensky. Z, Z, Z. He's a Jew. That's Jewish solidarity. So we need to start having African solidarity. And that's what we're going to talk about very, very soon. But before we do that, we will take you to Burkina Faso. But Burkina Faso has just received a free grain shipment from Russia. So Russia is trying to help this country. Russia back out of the grain deal with Ukraine. But now they are saying that they feel terrible. The West is trying to isolate Russia. But Russia is using the grain politics to connect with the African population. So long as they have Africa, then the Cold War is back, and they can flex their muscles. This time, they are helping Burkina Faso. They are also helping Burkina Faso with special forces to protect the government of Ibrahim Traoré. This is what is happening, and we know this. In addition, a lot of people like the fact that Burkina Faso is getting help from Russia, but the jihadist activity continues, and a lot of people are dying in Burkina Faso. So, is this going to be enough? Well, we think the new Sankara, Ibrahim Tare, should do more to help his people. Because the security situation is untenable. We don't like to see more and more people dying. Okay? Next, we tell you about the Central African Republic. You remember, when you look at this country, we look at Bokassa, Bokassa, Jean Bedel Bokassa, who made himself an emperor. He built all these lavish buildings. Today, where are those buildings? They are just left in, in ruin to rot. And it's not only unique in the Central African Republic. You see a nice swimming pool, but what is in there now? All the diamond, everything is looted and gone. Isn't this sad? It is. Then, we take you to Congo DRC. In Congo DRC, there is a new election taking place. Okay? And Martin Failu is also running. David Kwenge, the Nobel Prize winner, is also running. Moise Katumbi is also running. Martin Failu was a guy who was robbed of victory last time. Joseph Kabila had picked Felix Tshisekedi to become president at the expense of Martin Failu. This time, Martin Failu is ha ha holding very good rallies in. Uh, Bandundu, which is uh, 
the music area in Congo DRC. So the opposition is very fractured. So we think the division in the opposition may even make it easy for Felix Tshisekedi to win this election. And Felix Tshisekedi is doing a very good job. He brings out gladiators, dress, going to the uh, uh, Stade de la Mati, uh, the Matthias uh, Stadium. Okay? They deck themselves in gladiator's outfit and they come out and campaign for him. Besides, uh, Felix Tshisekedi also had a State of the Nation address where he made a case why he should be re-elected president. The problems are in the East, M23 and all these other forces. So Felix Tshisekedi is saying that, oh, I'm doing something about the problem. Re-elect me and I'll try to finish the job. So I just need some time to finish the job. Look at what I've accomplished so far. So it remains for us to see what the Congolese people are going to do. Are, are they going to vote Felix Tshisekedi this time? Or is he going to rig the elections? The opposition is already crying foul that uh, they don't think this election is going to be free and fair. They feel it will be rigged by Felix Tshisekedi. Next, we take you to Ghana. In Ghana, we, we, we have Nana Akufo-Addo. He's not running for re-election. But his vice is. But the big news in Ghana has to do with colonialism and slave trade. There was a meeting, a, a Pan-African meeting in Ghana, attended by Nana Kufu Ado, and most of the guys from the islands also attended this meeting. They are there to ask for reparations for slavery. We've been talking about reparations on this show many, many times. The Western world is meeting now in Europe in Berlin. It's like another scramble for Africa. China and Russia have been dominating in Africa, so the Europeans are trying to do something about it. They say they want to meet. So it's like another conference in Berlin. The scramble for Africa 2.0. This time, at least Africans are invited to the table. But are they just going to sit at the, at the table and receive crumbs? or they're going to be able to negotiate better deals for their people. This is what we expect from the new meeting of African presidents in Berlin. But for now, in Ghana, we are showing you Africans uniting to form a common front so that they can ask Europe to pay reparations. Europe enslaved Africans for a very long time. Africa lost a lot of talent. A lot of people died. Some were brought to the America. Some were brought to the West Indies. Now we need the Europeans to pay for slavery. We need the Europeans to pay for slavery. So we need to organize and ask for reparations. That was the purpose of the conference in Ghana. And we hope this conference succeeds so that our people can get something back. Because we were enslaved, but we didn't get anything back for the ens enslavement. Okay? We need to be paid. And I think the people are right. They need to be paid. Next, from Liberia, I take you to, sorry, from Ghana, I take you to Liberia. Tired of waiting in long lines at the emergency room or your doctor's office? You should be. Why wait in long lines for care? It's time for you to come to Lucille Urgent Care. Real care, no waiting. Lucille Urgent Care, the best place for true and loving care. Service at Lucille Urgent Care is convenient, fast, time efficient, affordable, accessible, transparent, and cost effective. Real treatment is your right. Indeed, it's not just a privilege or pejorative. Skip the emergency room's long lines, kiss the ER goodbye, say farewell to your old doctor's office, pay less, save time, enjoy the excitement of convenience, receive immediate treatment, get the health care you need quickly and affordably. Lucille Urgent Care offers many express services, rapid COVID-19 testing, on-site prescription, preventative lab services, imaging and x-rays, urgent medical treatment for common illnesses and injuries, routine vaccines and flu shots, work-related injury services, pre-employment, occupational, annual, and sports physicals, immigration exams, and much more. Same-day treatment, rapid lab results, extended hours, weekend hours, no appointment necessary, no insurance necessary, no doctor necessary, walk-ins accepted, telemedicine available. We are open seven days a week with evening and weekend hours. We are located in Maryland, Lucille Urgent Care, 903 Half York Road, Towson, Maryland, 21204. Website, lucilleuc.com. Call at 443-275-1286 or 301-593-4897.
Liberia had just organized uh, new elections. There was a runoff, and Joseph Bokai, the former, a former vice president, defeated George Weir. We've been talking about George Weir on this show many times. When he came to power, we saluted him, and we said the boy from Clara Town should make it good. He understands the poverty of the people. But George Weir has not been able to keep to his campaign promises. His presidency has been a big disappointment. Some people have claimed that he came in, he started filling his pockets with money, he forgot about the poor people who voted for him to rise and gain access into the presidency. So now the people responded. But the good thing is, we have to praise George Weir. Unlike the poor beers of the world, he did not engage in massive uh, fraud to steal the election from the people. He allowed the will of the people to reign. So for the first time in Africa, we can see that, just like what Good Luck Jonathan did in Nigeria, G George Weah is doing the same thing in Liberia. So this is something positive, something people need to copy. George Weah was humble to allow the will of the people to preside. He did not fight to stay in power. He decided that he would let power go to Joseph Bokai. And this is a, a new day for the people of Liberia. But we know Liberia has had a very torturous and bloody path. We still have pictures of the building of Charles Taylor. Today it is rot and ruin. We saw uh, this video on YouTube. You can see the, what has become of this mansion that Charles Taylor used to live in, from where he terrorized the whole country of Liberia. He said, we have a guy who took a picture of the whole building. It is in a very dilapidated state but you can see it and see what we're talking about. Next, we take you to Mali. Mali, MINUSMA, and UN, they are leaving Mali. As they are leaving Mali, in Kidal, the government forces of the junta of Mois uh, uh, Asimi Goita has been able to make some, some victories, gain some victories over the rebels, the Tuareg rebels, but the Tuareg are still fighting back. So, the exit of the UN is not going to make things easy for the government of Asimi Goita. Uh, they are faced with this menace of the Tuareg. We keep saying, talk to these people, come to the table. Mali has a lot of resources. We remember the former uh, Songa Empire, right? Mali has a, a lot of resources. Most of you remember Timbuktu. Uh, the rebels almost des destroyed this place. Okay? So, but we want peace. When there's peace, then things can work. Governments can work well when there is peace. So we always want to tell our people to sue for peace. Asimi Goita, sue for peace. Militarization is not going to bring peace to Mali. So let's understand this and let's keep laboring the point. Next, we take it to Nigeria. Well, Nigeria, is this is our market and we love Nigeria. Today, we saw that uh, Bola Tinubu is different from Mohammed Buhari. Instead of sleeping and letting the country run on autopilot, Bola Tinubu is already trying to do a lot of things. He's not Mr. Perfect, but he's doing a whole lot of things to save Nigeria. For one, he has been able to praise George Weah for allowing democracy to reign in Liberia. So he sent congratulatory messages to George Weah and welcomed Joseph Jokai as the new president of Liberia. That's good. Then Bola Tinubu has also shown that he's a new kind of leader. He's not like Mohammed Buhari. Now the university are always on strike. So Bola Tinubu has decided to solve this problem. Instead of allowing them to strike all the time and bring the country to a paralysis, he has decided that they should stop fighting they should be able to at least meet and dialogue. Dialogue is always a better solution to problems. When people dialogue, they meet each other halfway, then they're able to solve the problems that are affecting them. But when they don't dialogue, violence reigns supreme. And violence can never really solve a problem. Arms can never solve a problem. So we like the fact that Bola Tinibu is advocating dialogue as a solution to problems. And we're asking the university community to work with 
Bola Tinubu to bring about peace and dialogue so that people can stay in school. We know that sometimes some people don't want their children to go to school in Nigeria because the universities in Nigeria are always striking. They are always on strike. We are not saying that they don't have legitimate reason to strike. But what we are saying is these strikes actually make it difficult for the students to really attend school. So if they can meet with the head of state and his representatives and they can take action to solve the problems that are making them strike, this will be good for the country. Because we need progress. Progress cannot be made when there's violence and when there's unrest. So Bola Tinibu is doing something right. Besides, Bola Tinibu is also attending the G20 meeting in Berlin. And we know he's going to accept his influence in that meeting. And this will be something positive for Africa. And we want Nigeria to do better. Because when Nigeria does better, most African countries also do better. And Nigeria is the most populous country and the biggest economy in Africa. So if Nigeria is doing very well, it will be easier for smaller African countries to also do well. Which is why we say when Big Daddy Nigeria is fine, the other small countries also will be fine. And we salute Bola Tinubu for the good work that he's doing. And next, we take you to Senegal. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Well, in Senegal, the biggest problem is Osman Sankor. Osman Sankor. Osman Sankor. Osman Sankor is an activist and opposition figure. Makisa is against him. So this week, we understand that he had two setbacks in the legal department. Osman Sankor has been struggling to run for president. As he proposes, and Makisa disposes. Makisa has turned himself into a god in Senegal. He doesn't want Osman Sankor to run for president. In, in, in our own mind, we think that Osman Sankor should be allowed to run for president. Don't use flimsy excuses to disqualify his candidacy. By doing this, you're creating problems in the country. Makisa, can you hear me? Makisa, let Usman Sankor run for president. The people of Senegal would like him to run for president. So please, do not use legal tricks to block his candidacy. When you do this, you're creating problems for your country. Makisa, you said you do not want to create problems in your country. You believe in the country, you love your country, you want the interests of the country to prevail. You don't want to run for re-election. If you don't want to run for re-election, let the people who want to run for election run. You should not decide who should run and who should not run. So please, look at what is happening in the United States. Donald Trump is a bad guy. But they are not preventing him from running for the president. The legal system is working itself. The legal system may not be perfect, but they are not stopping him from running for president. They want everything to be tried truthfully in the court of law. There's no jungle justice. But we know in Senegal, you control the courts. You hire all those judges. So they are faithful to you. And those same judges are the ones disqualifying Usman Sankar from running. And we say, this is wrong. Let him run. Let the people decide. You may even be surprised. He may run and he may lose. So why are you afraid? You are afraid that he's going to win, right? And he'll become president. When Usman Sankar becomes president, is he going to crucify you? We don't think so. So stop preventing him from running. Let him run so that things can be peaceful in the country, Senegal. Senegal has always had a very democratic and peaceful tra tra tradition, starting with Leopold Sedar Senghor. So why do you not want this tradition to continue? Makisa. So I take you to task, Makisa, Makisa, Makisa. 
allow democracy to reign in Senegal. We've come to the end of our show, and we're telling you that we've hit most of the points we wanted to hit in this video. So if you're watching us for the first time, the benefits you get is we want Africa to be free. So long as the elections are free, so long as the economic system is free, it's good. But if it's not free, we'll continue having migrants leaving the continent to travel abroad. So the conference in Berlin, we know one of the objectives should be if you want African migrants to stop crossing the Mediterranean, to Europe, then you have to make sure that you don't support dictators. These dictators have very big mansions, dilapidated like Mobutu. You see the pictures, dilapidated mansions. Like I saw a picture of another guy, Jean Pateau, a guy from Cameroon, Biya's country. Why is he running? He was running from Tunisia and Libya. He lost his daughter and his wife along in the way. So today we saw a picture of Pope Francis comforting this dude, young Pato, Jean Pato. Pato, we feel for you and your family, but you represent what a migrant faces when they try to cross the Mediterranean. You made it, but your wife and your daughter, Marie, did not make it. We pray for them and we pray for you. May God bless you. us at alexiahtc.com. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.